discuss about the uh, research design and uh, and the last class i was telling about that uh, what are the procedural we are discussing that uh, what we supposed to do that i was giving a brief description about your uh, the proposal development uh, specifically in the light of research design because your research design is linked to the everything and uh, on this until you are very much clear about your objective your various variables your methodologies what exactly you are going to do how you are going to do unless and until you are very much clear about this it is very difficult to prepare a research design because your research design is the major frame on which the entire uh, your research will based on because if there is because you see if you look at, if you are constructing a building the foundation matters because if you are having anything wrong in your foundation then there is a high chance that the building may collapse suppose we whenever we are doing any bridge and all most of the time we see in the newspaper that bridge got collapsed and all so it is because of there is a lacuna in the foundation and all so that's why it is highly essential that we should be very much careful about the research design because the entire your research is based on your research design and your research design is based on your also the objective the variables to uh, what you have taken and your clarity on that because if you don't have any clarity on your objective and the variables relating to your objectives then the major problem will come so you should be very much careful about all these aspects so now let us discuss that what is research design so research design plan of the proposed research work means research design is nothing but it is a plan for a proposed research work means how you will do the research what is exactly the procedure you are going to follow what you have to do all these things comes under your research design means when you are you are doing a research you are making a plan because unless and until you made a plan you cannot move ahead so if you want to do a research first of all you should make a concrete plan again because you see whenever you prepared for an entrance whenever you prepared for getting a uh, chance in any course suppose whenever you wrote your graduation and uh, plus 2 even in the matric have you just simply went and uh, attended the exam it is not like that what you did before the exam you or from the the moment you get into the class 11th class or 10th class or the whenever you get into the any your uh, graduation course what you did from the very beginning you made your one plan that how to study how many hours i will spend in uh, going for uh, class and how many hours i will spend in my research in my to uh, homework and all these things you are very particular you have made a plan so accordingly you are progressing because always not until you made a plan your destination will be difficult to reach means your aim cannot be fulfilled unless and until you are having a concrete plan in your aim so it represents a compro compromise dictated mainly by practical consideration what exactly whenever you are doing a research design what you are doing you are also taking into consideration the practical difficulties the practical problems so what exactly the major problem will come in between so you are discussing all these issues in uh, advance because unless and until you are having a vision that these are the practical difficulties will come in between so you cannot make a proper research design then how will come to know that you have a problem with all these things the moment you are very clear with your objective the moment you are very clear about your variables the moment you are very clear that where to study how to study then only you will be very much clear about the your plan so unless and until you are not clear about your objective i am repeatedly telling not clear about your variables not clear about your uh, your field where exactly you are going to work then you cannot make a excellent research design so to prepare a research design you have to be very much clear very much uh, having a uh, kind of knowledge over all these issues because once you are having the knowledge and the clarity with all these issues then you can better the better research design then involves the combining the essential elements of investigation into an effective problem solving sequences so what you have to do once you are very clear with all this aspect once you are very clear with your uh, all these factors 
so then you can uh, prepare an excellent research design hello where you can think of that your investigation your research in the field can be effective in problem solving in a sequence in a not in a haphazardly in a proper step by step in a proper sequence you can do the uh, 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 research so that's why it is research design also involves a sequence it is not an kind of haphazard plan so plan of research is a statement that concentrates on the components that must be present in order for the objective of the study to be realized because what is your intention your intention is to realize your objective because unless until you are clear so you cannot realize your objective so how you realize your objective once your research design is very good your research design is very good then only you can uh, you can also only uh, becomes uh, uh, you can make a good plan so how you, so that's why while you are making a uh, kind of research design your main intention main objective is to realize the objective of the study right so that is your main intention means what is exactly the, your objective how you can find the data according to the objective and how you can write the report with the outcome of the report will have should have ultimately linked with the uh, objective because sometimes what happen if you get into in a wrong with a wrong research design what will happen your objective is something different your data is something different the moment you start doing the analysis and start writing the report you will face that difficulties i have brought the data which is no link to my objective so that's why you will again face the problem again you have to modify your questionnaire even you have to modify your research design again you have to go to the field so all these problems will come so that's why you should be very much careful from the very beginning because the main intention of your research design is realizing the objective in your study so that is the main intention then see what is the function of research design now why i am making a research design what is the necessity of research design because the function of research design will give a clarification about the necessity of a research design it provides a blueprint for studying the social questions for the researcher what exactly it is providing it is giving you a blueprint how to do the study what are the sequence you have to follow what are the question you will raise because you see you see while you are making a uh, kind of study so suppose i will give an example suppose i want to make a study on a particular in a tourism sector so there so i want to look into the how the tourism is being collapsed because of this pandemic and how we can improve this tourism and all these things so what you have to do you have to first have a bit. hello somebody is asking you so what you have to do you have to be very careful that what are who are the stakeholders being involved in the tourism whom i have to ask what are the their involvement to what extent they are involved you see and whenever you will also prepare a questionnaire you always not until you know who are the stakeholder and what is the limitation of that stakeholder suppose i am asking on tourism i i want to ask the people about also one stakeholder who will be the stakeholder the local people will be one stakeholder then this the small vendors or the people who are selling the products they are they are one of the uh, stakeholder the travel agency will be another stakeholder your hotel industry will be one more one one of the stakeholder then the government official the tourism department other line department they will be the one on stakeholder and the uh, board which is looking after that particular destination also will be one of the stakeholder so means i should develop such a question because only until i am very clear who are my stakeholder i cannot go to the field okay because something will, will uh, i miss if i don't know about the who are my stakeholders then the third thing will come here so once i am clear who are my stakeholder my questionnaire should be prepared accordingly because if i prepared a questionnaire who is supposed to be asked to the people if i ask the same questionnaire to the tourism department can they answer ha huh. one of my stakeholder is tourist also because they are the people who spend the money came here for amusement for because the maximum interest should be satisfied by the tourist because you see if the tourists are not happy they will not come again they will never recommend to some places suppose i visited one place as a tourist and i am not satisfied so i will never recommend so uh, to the others to 
uh, go to that place and I will also never come to that place again. So, what is the meaning? Suppose there is a place here uh, near to the Sundargar. We have a place called Thunadar. I might have gone around 20 times to that place. So, why I have visited that place 20 times? Even tomorrow, if somebody will call me also, if I get a chance, I will go again. So, what, what for I am going there? Because as a tourist, I got certain kind of satisfaction that going very frequently, it gives me pleasure as a kind of visiting the site for the first time. So, that's why I am, might be recommending others to visit or I as a tourist also visiting this site very frequently. So here what I'm telling. So once I'm clear about the stakeholder, I should prepare the questionnaire accordingly because I cannot ask the question who is supposed to the ask to the policy makers that I should not ask to the tourist really, because tourists may not have much knowledge on that. So means I should be very much careful whatever the variables should be fit to whom. What are the questionnaire will be fit to whom? All these things I should have a clarity. It is like a master plan. The research design is a master plan based on which your entire research will best. With the research design, a research can minimize here the research problem. If your research design is excellent, if your research design is very good, okay, so if your research design is amazing, so then what you do? You can do a better research and your all the research problems should be solved once your research design is very good. Okay. So that's why you should always develop an excellent research design which will minimize your research problems. So that will strengthen your work, that will reduce your time and cost expenditure because you see, sometimes you go to the field <laughs> without proper preparation. So what will happen? We will have a problem that we have to consume most of the time in only in sleeping in the field. We cannot do the our work. Then what will happen? We are consuming the time, we are consuming the wood. We are spending the cost and spending the time. So we have a we are means money and time we both are spending. So that should be we should be very much careful about that. It helps in making several decisions at each stage of research process. If I am very clear about my research design, your research design is always will help you in taking a several decision at a different level and a different stage. Hence, you should be very much careful about those aspects. So, because you see, I have always told you uh, earlier also, whenever we are doing any research, whenever we are making any plan for the finance, whenever we are making a time consuming, suppose whenever we might submit a proposal, we submit a budget. And also at the same time, we submit a Time, time frame, they ask for a time frame. So how we do, we always, whenever we prepare a time frame also, we always look into the 10% chance of the, there is a high chance. So first, whenever I go into the field, I, the problem may come. Suppose you see, whenever earlier we prepared that, uh, whenever you see somebody when uh, we took a project from the government and all, with what we thought, we mentioned that, this first two months I'll prepare the literature review. Then one month I'll spend it doing the my questionnaire. Suppose somebody has given a time that my I have a one year project. Then in between what I did, I made a plan that by January 2020, I'll prepare my questionnaire. And uh, sorry, my literature review. By February 20, I'll prepare my questionnaire. Then from March first onwards, I'll do the field work. But you see, it now from March to till now, is it possible to do a field work? Is it possible to uh, for somebody go went and stay, spend some time in the field, do the rigorous study and all? Till now not possible. So that means we have consumed already eight nine months, which is so that means there is certain kind of accidental risk may arise in the field. So always whenever we made a time frame in our research design, whenever we prepared the cost. Like so now if I could have uh, appointed some person, is it possible in my part to pay the salary to him? Impossible. What I'll tell? Please you go because my project period is one year and uh, I have uh, this much money for you, but unless and until my work is being started, I cannot pay you the money because if I will keep you, stay with me. So it is not a kind of government job that I will keep with you, uh, with me and I will pay you salary. Hey, that, that is the major problem. So means we always take certain kind of 10% also the cost into account if there is a risk. But anyhow, this is a uh, 
uh, pandemic and this is lingering that is different issue but whenever we went to the field because of certain kind of incident we may lost 15 days one month even two months we may lost in the field so that's why we always look into the in our research design also we always look into the what about the assumption assuming certain problems may come in future in the field for which we should have a preparedness it helps in making several decision at each stage of research process so you see it specifies the boundaries of research activities and enables the researcher to direct his or her energies in a specific direction it specifies the boundaries of research activities like because the research design will give you a proper plan it will define your boundaries where to work how to work up to what extent you have to collect the data suppose i went to the field i am doing work suppose on on uh, water management but if i collect unnecessarily so many data on health all these issues so that means i am diverting so means i am going to the field without a proper research plan research design so because if i uh, uh, go without a research design without a proper plan so i will collect on so many unnecessary thing from the field which will consume my time at the end of the day so that will hamper my direction and so once i have a research design i will have a specific direction i will have a defined boundary my objective is very clear my variables are very clear and and under this variable whom i will meet where what i will collect how to collect all these things are very clear so that's why i always tell my students while you are mentioning your objectives you should very much carefully mention the variables in that objectives and your methodology also in relation to that variables because only so until you are clear on that you will be in trouble it makes the researcher conscious about what is to be done and what not to be done you know you have to also very much careful about that it enables the investigator to anticipate the potential problems in the carrying out of a research study you know it enables the investigator to anticipate the potential problem in the carrying i have already told you means i have to anticipate i have to go for anticipation that what kind of problem may come in the field and if any problem come in the field how i overcome that problem so that should be very clearly mentioned from the very beginning a research design can also provide an idea of estimation of the cost of research time required possible problem in measurement and analysis what do you have to do you have to be very much careful that what should be your what should be your cost and once you are very clear about your cost and all so then you can proceed so that's why i told na so you should your research design should anticipate the problem your research design should prepare a proper time frame your research design should properly mention the cost and while you are preparing the cost so you should have a always have a very much careful that what are the kind of items of which you have to spend the money how many person you need for the collection of the data so what are the incidental you have to spend so that's why you always keep something on contingency what is the intention of mentioning some contingency some accidental uh, requirement may be needed in the field uh, so that can be covered from that contingency then characteristic of a good research design a good research design should have the ability to meet the four conditions means once your research design is very clear you have to very clear uh, man you have to look into whether these are the four aspects the uh, is being met by your research design or not first is objectivity whether your research design is having objectivity or not so when you see the intention what is exactly your intention whether you are able to uh, collect this information or not and whether your mechanism is very scientific in nature or not then the second is reliability whether your research design is reliable or not suppose you watch suppose so means if you don't have any reliability on that so you will not carry that was today it is showing uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow 10 o'clock day after to 11 o'clock so you have don't have a reliability so that means your research design you should have a reliability what is the sense of reliability means the moment you have Uh, prepared a research design you have prepared the research design 
in accordance with your objective, in accordance with your field, because you have already an experience in the field. You have already having certain kind of knowledge in the field. Because unless and until you are having knowledge in the field, you cannot prepare a good research design also, because sometimes if you drag, if you jump to the field without the proper uh, research design and without having much knowledge in the field, which is being incorporated in your research design, then the ultimately the problem will come. So you, uh, you know, uh, means uh, the data and all these things, you will find difficulties in collecting the data and all. Then the another major aspect is the validity. So how to collect, how to depend upon the validity. So means unless normally you are very much careful about the validity. So means can you validate the data? Can you validate the design? Means while you are making a research design, your intention is. So the data which I am going to collect, can I validate that? Can this research design can be validated in a different domains in a different place if the similar kind of situation arises? So that's why the validity of your research design is highly essential. Then the generalability, generalized generalizability means you should have a plan that the information which I am going to collect. The mechanism which I am adopting in collecting the information, can I generalize it? When see if the similar kind of situation arises, I can I propose that this will be the, uh, uh, the mechanism of collecting the information. So that is highly essential. Then now we'll discuss about the types of research design, which is very, very essential. So based on the objective of the research, the research design can be categorized into three types. One is explanatory, another is descriptive, and experimental. So generally, these are the there are lots of research design, but generally in the qualitative research, we mostly focus on this kind of research design. These are three research design. Usually, we follow in the qualitative research, and these are the major broad research design. Usually, in, uh, we follow in any kind of research also. So, means first is explanatory. What is the meaning of explanatory? Anybody, what is the meaning of explanatory? Hmm? Hello. Ah, tell. Yeah. To explain something. So, what is the difference than uh, descriptive and explanatory research? What is the difference? Explanatory and descriptive research. Huh? What is the basic difference? What is basic difference with this? Huh? Hello. Anybody? Okay. So, what exactly we are doing in explanatory research? Here, we are not taking any hypothesis to the field. No hypothesis to test as the researcher has a little knowledge about the problem under investigation. Means here, whenever I am going. Uh, to a field and I'm going to prepare my research design here. I don't have much knowledge about the problem which I am going to investigate. Means I'm mostly the new to this area. I have taken a problem on which I don't have much knowledge, but I'm not having zero knowledge. I'm having knowledge, but little bit knowledge for, for which I may not draw lots of hypothesis on that. I simply can go to the field with my little, little knowledge. I can proceed further and collect the information and investigate the problems. And uh, generally in qualitative research, we, we follow this explanatory research design mostly. Then the second thing is descriptive. Generally what happens if my study is mostly on ethnographic research? Provides the researcher a vast amount of information about social setting, can reveal the potential relationship between different variables. Here, what happens? Suppose if I am doing an ethnographic study of a particular village, a particular location, particular community, particular area. So there, what I'm doing? I'm going to the field within a complete uh, kind of blank mind. But in explanatory research, I'm going with certain kind of research question, but not as in hypothesis. Because I have a little bit knowledge, also I'm going. I am going to investigate more and more about my problem. At the same time, I have certain kind of research question in my mind, which I may collect. But in descriptive research design, it is a completely ethnographic kind of research. I am going to the field in a kind of with a zero kind of uh, uh, 
uh, when I add jumpstart with a zero kind of uh, um, readings about that area, I'm going completely and collecting the information in a more in depth. It is not that I'm though I'm making a see when I'm doing a village ethnography, what I'm doing there. And even if I'm have selected that particular aspect on which I'll do the ethnography, I'll study. But they are also what I'm doing. I am making a complete kind of information I'm collecting about the social setting and uh, the, uh, the relationship between different variables, the relations in the different aspects. So means if even if I my intention is to give a clear picture about a particular community, clear picture about a village, clear picture about a location. So there what I'm doing, I am doing a in-depth analysis. I'm going an intensive field work. I'm completely looking into the different aspects, linking the different aspects into the, into, in the different domains. So from which I am developing the relationship between variables. So here also I'm looking into the health and how health is influencing them in their education, how health is influencing uh, them in their knowledge management and uh, um, specific indigenous knowledge and uh, um, how uh, the uh, their uh, indigenous knowledge is preserving, uh, helping them preserving their uh, envir envir environment and how the environmental management is helping them in providing the better uh, community position. All these things I'm looking into in a very uh, broader way, in a very descriptive way and which is mostly the ethnographic research do the very descriptive. Then the third one is experimental research design. It includes the control variable. The researcher experiment by observing the effects of one or more actors variables upon the other under control conditions. So you see the experimental variable mostly we used to think that we usually do in the experimental research design in the lab and all. But you see for a social scientist, what experiment we are doing? Suppose I am looking into the impact of coal mining on the local environment or impact of coal mining on local community or local economy. Suppose if I am doing what I am to do, so I selected a coal mining. So I selected a suppose coal mining and I will tell that okay, I just want to compare the before mining and after mining. Even if I do the before mining and after mining, sometimes what happened, I found that suppose the mining is being introduced in this locality where I am doing the study is quite old. Suppose maybe 50 years old, this mining is being introduced. Suppose 30 years old, this mining is being introduced. If I ask the people that what was your economic condition, how many land was there, how what was your production, the amount of production. Like, so there what exactly happened? There are lots of issues will come. Suppose if I tell 30 years back, what was your cost of cultivation? He will tell that there is no much uh, needed of for this uh, fertilizer and all. Like, so and also he will tell that so uh, the labor cost was very less, though their income was less also. Labor cost was less than uh, uh, the other aspect was very less, uh, less, uh, less. So there what exactly happened? So when they calculate everything, then um, they compare in the today's uh, things, then I will tell that suppose earlier in 30 years back, I was spending a per acre, uh, the total cost of uh, agriculture was suppose, um, 200 rupees per acre and today it is might be 20,000 rupees per acre. So then immediately I will write in my description. So mining has lots of impact because of mining this the, the investment, uh, the cost of agriculture has increased and the uh, uh, the profit is also that time the production was high and then they used to get more money and now I will tell that okay their uh, cost is very high, their, product, their profit is very less now, then I will tell it is the, ultimately the impact of mining. But you see sometimes what happened? So is it the only the impact of mining or other variables also having certain impact? The market will have changed, the market has changed, like the market uh, uh, system has been changed. So many factors has come in between. Like so that's why we should be very much careful about that because by taking simple this data, I cannot make a comparison. Okay, so means that simply I cannot tell pre-mining and post-mining. The first is the people may forget. The second is the time is not comparable also. The time is also not comparable because there is a huge gap. The 30 years back, 30 years, there is no much science and technology being developed. Okay, there is uh, uh, no opportunity for the labor to go somewhere and work because unless, you see, suppose I have an opportunity to work in different places. 
so i can bargain with some company that uh, i have the potentiality and i found that there is an opportunity available in the market but look at the 30 years back then i was having the same bargaining capacity because you know because the market was not so open the market was very clumsy the market was very confined i was not having scope to bargain scope to uh, uh, having exposure to different companies like so that's why i cannot do that so that's why in experimental research what exactly we do we have to select a control village and how to deselect a control village i can select a village in the same agroclimatic zone it will be wise in the same district and having the similar kind of population composition into account suppose if i am working on a tribe tribal particular tribe so i have to select a village nearby area maybe within 25 30 kilometers that area where the similar kind of population the similar kind of tribal or similar kind of caste composition people are living uh, because once the community changes i cannot make a comparison between tribal and uh, in one area and non tribal in another area so means uh, means i should also look into that the population the major stakeholders should be more or less similar the second is that uh, i have to look into that uh, suppose the earlier the villagers in uh, where i am going to study the mining impact suppose they were mostly depending on the uh, forest so i have to select an area where the uh, villagers the control village where the villagers are still depending on forest for their survival then the third thing what we have to do it should be in the same agroclimatic zone because it is not that i will make a study in odisha and another study in jharkhand i cannot mean uh, control group from jharkhand i cannot make a uh, the, the experimental I, I cannot make an experimental group uh, from uh, uh, sundargarh and uh, control village from the coastal so when I, mean, i can take but that is depends upon the topics on uh, it depends upon my objective on which i am making a study when if i am making a comparison between tribal and non tribal and also the objective and other aspects are different so uh, that, so that should be that should be different so it is not that i can take anything else so here you see the why i am putting the control village then i am taking a control village i am taking a control village i am taking a control village so i should be very much careful that what exactly i have to do so there only uh, i can make a proper comparison because only so until i am having a very good knowledge on that i cannot do so that's why it is highly essential when i am doing the experimental research you have to take a control village and how to select also control village i told you because there what will happen the control village is the similar time period because the control village which i selected it is based on the similar time period and if as it is a similar time period so if i look into the agriculture if i am looking into the similar uh, kind of time period so there i can compare there i can compare that this will be the because suppose i found that the somebody in a control village as sparing the uh, cost of agriculture per acre is suppose 10000 so i am assuming it should be 10000 here if i found that no it is here it is 20000 so then i can argue that this is because of the impact of mining because the control village also not having much exposure they are also belong to the same agroclimatic zone and all this modernity everything has come up because of this mining because exactly see what sometimes some people argue that sir you cannot simply argue that it is because of the mining only it might be because of different reason but i have to argue that whatever the uh, urbanization is being developed the industrialization is being developed it has pulled the lots of outside people to get into this area it is so all these things is being developed because of this mining so if you look at the process of change in this locality it is because of this mining because once i started mining in a particular area so lots of people get into once the lots of people get into that location because of the rise of the demand in the market we have to go for opening up more market opportunity here then slowly the urbanization will come up and once a mining industry has come up in a particular area the subsidiary uh, industry will come up like the small uh, small small industry will also come up so that means the mining as an industry major industry has given a scope for the urbanization has given a scope for the industrialization so that's why 
I can conclude that in comparison to the control village, that there is an impact of mining on the local economy or the local environment in comparison to that control village. So, unless and until my selection of the control village is not good, I cannot do a proper experimental research. Here then, uh, the research design can also be categorized. One is experimental by manipulating independent variables on one can determine whether they have any bearing on the de dependent variable. One can choose one or more experimental groups representing different levels of independent variables. So, means you can uh, uh, select also different uh, control village and all these things based on that how many independent variables, how many different variables you are taking and the levels of independent variable. Then cross-sectional, often known as the survey design and it gathers information from large number of people by interviewing a few of them. This is sometimes what we usually do also. We do the cross-sectional research design. The cross-sectional research design we do. How we do? We take large number of people uh, uh, belongs to different uh, communities and belongs to different locations, belongs to different area. So there what we do? We collect the information through survey design and we uh, gather the information through survey design. Then we do a kind of, uh, we interview lots of people and we do a cross-sectional comparison. Means what exactly? Suppose if I want to make a comparison that uh, how the uh, people's, uh, suppose the pandemic, how the school children are reacting, how the uh, college students are reacting, because the way the school students are reacting to the, uh, to reacting is not the same as a, um, college students are reacting like, because this pandemic different segments of people have a different, different kind of reaction suppose can suppose whenever i will compare i cannot compare that that uh, the uh, way um, a poor person a poor person is reacting the similar way uh, the rich person are also reacting so that means there is a kind of huge differences so we should be very much careful about all these aspects Huh. The longitudinal also it is an extension of survey research and only difference is that it is carried out in the more than one occasions. I mean longitudinal research design. Suppose what I do, I will uh, do a uh, kind of, uh, it is not essential now for you, we can discuss all these things later on. You see longitudinal generally what happened, I will make a study now the, uh, I will go to a particular area, suppose I am looking at the study on disaster. What I can do, I can go and make the study in the on that particular community during the flood period. And again, I will go, I can make the study during drought period. In that same region, what the data I will collect on flood. And I can go in a normal period in the rainy season again, there is no flood, no drought, normal monsoon has come up, I can make a study on that. So there is a kind of difference is there. So there is panel studies, court studies, I will discuss all these things in the later on when we will go in details in the future. All these things we will discuss later on. So then the case study. Also it studies a single unit employing both qualitative and quantitative because some people have also they go with a research design, they make only a case study. They do a particular city, they take a particular village, they, they make a particular, on a particular book they make a study. Because sometimes literature people that picked up one book and then the, they make a study on that particular book. And sometimes they take a particular author that how the particular author during that period have done a uh, study, they can look into. Then comparative method, which is, uh, comparative method is very, uh, our Rekhi Brown uh, has must introduce and uh, the comparative method. So what we are, when, wherever we are more, suppose comparing uh, two or more uh, cases we are comparing. Suppose if I, I did a comparative study between the uh, uh, tribal and non-tribal irrigation how a tribal people are dealing with the irrigation project and how non-tribal people are de uh, also dealing with the irrigation projects. So, means you, and while you are comparing, you have to also be very much careful. Is it comparable first? If you are comparing, then what are the other factors should be con remains constant? Because you cannot compare the two things which is not comparable. So, you cannot simply tell the, for the sake of the comparison, you can pick up two things and tell that I am making a comparative study. It is impossible. You have to first clarify. You have to first justify whether these two groups are comparable or not. Then research design, I delineate four major purpose of social research. 
to gain the familiarity with an object and phenomenon or to gain the insight that's why to gain the insight of a or to gain the knowledge to get into the more closer to get into the more in-depth knowledge about that particular issue we also made a research design to describe the things in a proper way what is happening how to do what all these things if you want in a more descriptive way you have to have a research design to determine association or relationship between variables so what are the variables available how to establish the relationship we take a research design so what to test a hypothesis suppose experimental research design we have to take a hypothesis that coal mining has impact on local community this is my hypothesis i have to prove it or disapprove it whatever so means i have to take a hypothesis so to test the hypothesis i have to be very careful about my research design because on this not i am having a research proper research design so i cannot take a uh, uh, to test the hypothesis i should have a proper research design one very important character of any research design is flexibility in qualitative research usually also our research design is usually we take more flexible way because only until we take a flexible in the context of research design because i don't know what will happen in the field because if i am not very clear about what is going to happen so then i if i my research design is very stringent very uh, kind of confined there is no flexibility so then i cannot give justice to my research so this is the thing. anybody any question we can discuss hello anybody any doubt huh uh, sir ha uh, sir could you explain the comparative study see the comparative generally whenever we are making a comparative see i will tell you there is a very good book on uh, comparative methodology by gopal soren few months back only died uh gopal uh, soren he is an excellent uh, social scientist specifically in social anthropology he has written a very good book on comparative methods this comparative method is what i'm telling the comparative means i should be very much careful that uh, with whom i am going to compare who are my means if i am making a comparison between the two villages i should look into that that should certain kind of compare uh, kind of uh, you see suppose if i do a uh, comparative study between two communities which are completely different which are completely different their culture is completely different it depends upon on what topic i am doing suppose i will tell you that suppose i am making a study i made a study on uh, comparison mm, between uh, the uh, food culture uh, during pregnancy among the tribals and non tribals so when you hear you see if i look into uh, the tribals and non tribals also here comparison uh, i if i take a similar uh, same area or same village and uh, compare the food culture uh, between tribal and non tribal during pregnancy the food culture and pregnancy a comparative study between tribal and non tribal if i take a same location i may not find much differences because generally what happen even if Uh, the communities are more or less different the culture is more or less similar like the culture is more or less similar in a particular village or particular locality because you see the the uh, because you see there are different aspects there are, and in a but some in some aspect we may not find much differences but in some aspect we may find there are huge differences suppose you see i can take a uh, kind of comparison of uh, among the uh, in the context of the uh, response to the education a comparative study response to the primary education or higher education uh, a comparison study between tribal and non tribal communities in a particular location if i take i can find that the non tribal communities living in that same villages might be having a very positive and a very uh, vibrant response to the primary education but which is not in the case of tribals because we know that even if the non tribal peoples are living in a particular area they usually play a predominant role that usually plays a dominant role they always grab the all the advantages of the benefits all the development projects they used to grab like right? so means the profit usually is usually to go to them but which is not in the case of non tribals usually 
But if you look into this food culture and pregnancy, so as we are sharing the same geographical location, sharing the same village and all, and most of the time we are mingling with each other, more or less, more or less there is a cultural similarity. Though I am not telling that uh, the culture is completely same because tribal people have different culture, non-tribal non have a different culture, but more or less people living in a particular region develop a similar kind of belief system, but which is not in the case of the communities who are living differently. So means I, I can I took one village from Sundargarh and one village I took from Bhadra, which is uh, the coastal, completely coastal. I took a village where there is no tribal community at all. So there is a kind of that there you can do the comparison. So that is what I'm telling you. You should be very much careful that whether these two domain can be compared. So if we cannot compare, so then we should not we should not take the comparative studies. Compare there are different aspects. So Suppose a mining is being introduced in a particular area. The same company has introduced the mining in another location. You can look at the, to compare these two areas, how uh, uh, the people in that area are coping and the people in this area are coping. You can make a comparison also. Hello. So anybody, any other doubts? I think Mr. Singh, it is uh, uh, clear now. Yes, so sir. Anybody? Okay, anybody? Sir, I don't understand the longitudinal one. Sorry? Longitudinal. Uh, longitudinal, I told. Uh, actually, what happened? I uh, can grab, give a kind of uh, uh, gap. I can give a gap to my study. It is not that I am making a study and it is stretch. I told you when I can come and make a study uh, in a particular location during drought period. I can make, I'm doing the study on flood, but I can uh, come and do the study during drought period, during flood period, during normal period. Then what will happen? I can understand the reality exactly. But if you see, I have told you while I was the, the discussing on that, that suppose if I do a study uh, on a, uh, the relationship between the landlord and the agricultural laborers and uh, i can do a study suppose in a particular village i went and i make a study and i found that uh, i will in my conclusion i will tell that the landlords are exploiting the laborers then there is some other person they went to a uh, area and make a study and they told that there is a symmetrical relationship between landlord and agricultural laborer both are cooperating each other so then who, on which i will believe because you see I can argue that the person who had gone to the uh, area of uh, in a particular area and studied that period during that period there might be drought, there might be less agricultural production for which the relationship may be called as a symmetrical relationship because there if a production is very less, the then both the landlord and the labor might have got very less profit and uh, the uh, landlord might have listened to the laborer that okay, these are, this time there is no much production, we have to compromise with our profits. But if I go to a kind of a, a very uh, healthy monsoon period in a, to, uh, to an area where there is an excellent monsoon period camp and the production, there is a bumper crop produced. So there, what I will do, the labor price is fixed. The labor might have taken the 100 rupees, that is fixed, but the profit generated has gone, huge profit has gone to the landlord because of huge production. So there, what I'll find, there is a huge disparity. Disparity is being observed between the, the sharing of the money, sharing of the production between the landlord and also the agricultural laborer. So there, I will tell that, okay, there is an exploitation. The most of the profit is being taken by the landlord. The uh, labor is getting very minimal. So that means, if I'm doing a longitudinal study and all, so that's why we can. So that's why in our anthropological research or sociological research, we usually we, we uh, tell people to you spare much time in the field. At least you spend one cyclic period in the field and there throughout the season. Because I have told you the way I behave in the summer. Is it similar to the way we behave in the rainy season? Is it same the way we behave in the winter? I was telling uh, an example. Suppose it is. Now, suppose the weather is very fine, it is very sunny, and uh, there is nobody, there is no class to take. Suppose I am just putting my chair and looking into the outside uh, from my window now. And what the uh, the experience which I am developing now, I will write down what exactly I am seeing, what is my experience, what I am seeing, my observation, I, I note down. 
But if you look at those, suppose the similar way next day, tomorrow suppose, I have no class, I have no other work, it is heavily raining, the weather is very fantastic, I am again putting my chair in the same place and throw into, I am looking into the outside and starting writing my narration. So the, my narration, what I have written yesterday will be different than today. Because the change in the weather have changed my feelings to write. My imagination, my description is different. So that's why I told you once also I gave another example. Suppose there is a beautiful uh, uh, rose garden. There are five people are traveling through that garden. Five people get into that garden. One person having an imagination enjoyed the beauty of the nature. Thanks to the God that you have a beautiful creation of flowers. Excellent flower. He didn't pick up because he thought that okay. The nature should be protected. He enjoyed and beauty and came back. And if the person, a researcher standing outside, asked them what you enjoyed, he will tell that I enjoyed the beauty of the nature and very good time. Tomorrow I'll come because it gives me a freshness to my eyes and mind. He left. Then the second person uh, returned and he asked, What is your experience? So for the second person is a devotee of the God. Every morning he picked up flowers. Then what will look into? He will look into if anybody no, the mall is there, no gardener is there, what will do? He will pick the flowers and he will tell that, okay, this flower, if I give to my God, my God will look beautiful and God will be happy on me. I have given a very beautiful flower to him. Then the third person might be a poet. He saw the beautiful flowers, the how the, uh, the this beautiful butterflies are roaming, this uh, honeybees are roaming. He looked into that and started writing some poems and uh, share the experience with you. That a beautiful eye of development poem. The fourth one might be a very romantic person. He thought that okay, I'll pick up this flower and I'll give to my girlfriend or boy, whatever. So means means he is having some different kind of imagination. So what I'm telling the people's imagination is something different, which varies according to their perception, according to the change in mood and change in the time. So that's why in the longitudinal, this is highly essential also to make a step. So anybody, any question? So, if you're not there, then I'll. Huh. So, all present there today that Siddhartha came today or no? Sir, uh, like uh, on Friday, I have contacted him. He said he was like uh, he got access to all the classes, but he is not attending because of his final exams. Okay, he's, oh, he's writing his final exam. Fine. Yes, sir. Because we have uh, two Sarthak, na? So, uh, anyhow, that's fine. So, because at least we should have a knowledge that he is not attending the class because of his own problem. Otherwise, yes, sir. Otherwise, you will simply absent, uh, but ultimately, he will be loser then. Anyhow, he is aware that that's fine because uh, from my our side, our problem is solved that we have intimated, and uh, because of his problem, he is not able to attend. Okay. Uh, sir? Uh, uh, open, uh, uh. Sir, you gave me the link to access the team, but I am not able to access it. It is not visible from my teams. But I have added you. Yes, sir, but it is not showing in my teams. I don't know why. So, so I sent you a request to the team. But I have added you, know, so, so directly you can join. Yes, sir, but it is not opening at all. The team is not showing in my uh, app. Oh, I am not understanding. Them. So you can then ask this computer center people. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, that computer center, na, you, there is a Manoj Patai. Na, you can, uh, because right now my mobile is not with me, otherwise I could have told you his number. You, uh, you talk to him. Yes, sir. So still I have uh, sent you a 